Hi, my name's Emma Crampton. I'm the Numeracy Learning Specialist at Footscray High School, based at Barclay Campus. I'm recording this in lieu of our Parent Information Night that we would have held to explain our maths program to you uh, at the start of this term, and also um, the parent-teacher interviews which we, we missed at the end of last term, where teachers would have met you and taken you through uh, the data that we have gathered on your child about their um, maths knowledge and what they've retained from primary school. So I'd just like to start with an acknowledgement of country. I'd like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people and the Kulin Nation, the custodians of the land on which I'm recording and pay my respects to their elders past and present and to extend that respect to other Aboriginal people viewing this recording. Now I thought I'd just start with the, a little bit of a backstory about why we have um, this program running at Footscray High School and it's everything that we do is linked to our annual implementation plan and our goals for our students. So our, one of our main goals this year is to develop the skills and processes needed so that each student is challenged at their point of need. Mathematics across year seven to nine at Footscray High School follows um, a continuum of, of learning. In year seven, we put a lot of effort into diagnosing the level of mastery that your child comes to us with. So that's the amount of maths that they can easily recall from their primary school years. So we do this so we can figure out where we start with them, where where we continue to learn. If the foundations aren't strong, we need to uh, go back, find those areas of misconception, of fuzzy understanding, and then build on that. Because we, we do want our students to master these lower levels of mathematics because they are a numeracy for life. Uh, these are the math mathematical concepts we use every day. So um, it is really important that we do fill any gaps that are present from primary school. We also use this time in year seven to get to know your child. We look at the way they interact with others, the way they commit themselves, their work ethic, their self-efficacy, their growth mindset if they have one. What kind of mindset do they have? Do they give up easily? So it's a, it's a time for us to really get to know your child as a whole learner, not just what they bring to us as, as a memory for concepts. Year eight will allow us to then move on to the newer concepts with your, with your child. Some will get to that in year seven, some still won't be ready for that. We extend and challenge them in the concepts that they've now created a strong foundation for. And then into year nine, we build further on that and prepare them for their senior pathway. So we have plenty of opportunities for students and we expect all of our students to be accessing maths at our senior years and there is absolutely no reason why we can't have full participation in maths from every single student, no matter what their starting point. So the program that we use to diagnose the level of mastery that your child is coming to us from primary school with is called Maths Pathway. Maths Pathway is a teaching and learning model. It's not just a single program. We use their online components for the diagnostic process, but it is a multimodal teaching and learning model. So we have targeted module work that unlocks for students as they master new concepts, and that is sequenced in the logical continuum of learning for maths. And that allows students to progress along their own pathway at their own rate. I'll go through very shortly about the different modes of teaching within the model. And it is important to understand that um, not one part of this model can be isolated as a representation of our teaching and learning model. These all uh, work hand in hand over our learning cycles in order to get the best outcomes for students. So all of these parts of the learning cycle need to be present for your student. The graphic you can see here outlines the different modes of teaching within the Maths Pathway Learning Cycle at Footscray High School. Our diagnostics, they sit outside of that cycle. We have approximately 16 cycles in a year, four for each term. 
Thorough diagnostic testing will place uh, the students on their own individual pathway through mathematical topics suited to their point of need. We use this to backfill any of those gaps that are important foundational knowledge for skills they need to build on to access maths at the higher levels. Once we have enough information from the diagnostics, a series of modules are open for each individual student. These open at the point of need for that student based on what they've shown mastery over. These modules replace the traditional textbook. Students complete their work just like a traditional maths class in their, in their exercise book, but they are taking their exercises from these modules that are unlocked to them. Once they complete a module, they have the choice of adding it to their test if they're confident or choosing another module. As they click through the modules, the modules that are at their point of need will only be open to them. In order to reach harder modules, they need to unlock the prerequisite modules. Another important mode within our cycle are rich tasks. Rich tasks are run roughly once per learning cycle and they are tasks where we encourage students to talk about mathematics, play with mathematics, pose ideas, try to break them down, break down their arguments and really delve deeper into the beauty of maths. We don't use these to inform our dots on the report. So they're not linked to specific uh, substrands or strands within the curriculum. These are designed to really focus on the critical and creative thinking required when dealing with uh, quantified data or, or with any mathematical concept as we deal with in the real world. Our rich tasks have multiple entry and exit points. That means that Every student within the class can access the task, can learn, can grow from each other, regardless of what they've been working on in their regular pathways and regardless of what level that was at. Once per semester, we have projects. These are rich tasks that are we've drawn out some more, more of a deep dive into. We'll have more parts to them and it's more of an autonomous investigation for students throughout the whole week. You will notice that on your reports there are rich tasks and projects as one of the assessment tasks. This is a re representation of how well your child has engaged with this, the thinking required for these tasks. Now direct instruction is at the, the heart of, of this diagram and it is something that we get a lot of parents um, worried that we're not including with our maths um, in our maths model and it is very much a part of um, our learning model. So direct instruction is really important and students receive this in a number of ways. So the main way is our mini lessons. So mini lessons uh, take over from the, the, hop, the chalk and talk of the traditional classroom where all students were on the same page looking at the same example on the board um, because we know that not all students are ready for that same thing, that same concept at the same time. So using the data within our system it enables us to really um, to filter our students out into smaller groups of students requiring the same uh, topic or um, even students with the same misunderstanding, which is a really powerful way to, to do, um, look at some lessons. So you can, you can get some kids together who are all stuck at the same area and you can work through it and there's no judgment from the kids because they've all got that same issue. We try to keep these going, these mini lessons, consistently throughout the learning cycle. So while students are working on their targeted modules, that is freeing up the teacher to run the mini lessons. There are other areas, so other ways for students to get help before calling on the teacher, which allows for the teacher to be running these mini lessons. The steps that we try to get students to follow, to really build their self-efficacy, as to work backwards from the answers. It's not cheating to look at the answers because if they were to, say, look at the answers and not understand the concept and put it on their test, 
they wouldn't have the answers in that test. So it doesn't help them out in the long run. So students can work backwards from, from the solution to see where they went wrong if, if they're not quite getting a concept. There are video tutorials for every module. And there's also an opportunity for students to see what peers are working on the module or have already mastered that module. So all of that is at the students' fingertips in their portal on the module. If they go through those three steps, so that's the, it's the three before me routine, which a lot of schools do employ. So once they've, if they've tried to get themselves unstuck by using those three steps and they're still not finding that they quite grasp what's going on, if the teacher is currently in a mini lesson, the student can choose another module and keep working and try those three steps again and then approach the teacher for a mini lesson or put in a request for a mini lesson at a later date. Students should keep themselves working. They can put stuff off to the side and come back to it later if they really require the teacher to see where they're at and to get them unstuck then that can happen too when the teacher is free for that next mini lesson. At the end of the fortnight, the students have completed their modules, they've written them out in their books, they're ready for them, they've put them on their tests, they've done their revisions, and then they do their own tests. So the system will generate an individualised test for each student. It has a paper section. During remote learning, students were annotating their paper section on their Chromebooks for the ones with the touch screens. Some were printing them out at home and filling them in and then submitting photos, or others were writing them in their books. So the paper section is mathematics that needs to be written out. We need to see a drawing to support the thinking or we need to see the working out in some way. The paper test gets marked by the teacher and then there's an online component that the computer marks. So students do their tests, they hand them in and then they can get to work on their early access modules while their teacher marks their test. And the turnover is really quite quick with the test, so students should know within the day or the next day how they've gone on that test and they will then be able to sit a reflection. So when the test finishes and it has been marked, a student can do their test reflection, which actually gives them a second chance at any online questions if they got them wrong. Also, um, in addition to this, we get feedback from the students themselves. We've been doing this via Google Classroom. It's just a quick seven-minute quiz at the end of each learning cycle to get them to reflect, you know, what were your scores this week? How did it make you feel? Is there anything you're going to change for next week? So this really allows for students to go, well, my effort was good. I did all my modules, but my accuracy was not great so next week next cycle I'm going to spend more time doing revision you know really internalizing their marks and taking responsibility for making them better because once again we do report on the averages so that allows for those bad weeks to happen every two weeks students are tested they get the feedback from that and they take that into their next cycle so we have this continuous reporting a typical learning cycle has nine lessons at the moment. We have five that we would be doing modules for, and that's why the teacher's running these mini lessons as well. One for a rich task and one for revision. So students are meant to do six modules a fortnight, and as you can see, there are only five module lessons. Each module takes roughly 40 minutes, some are less, some are more. If students are not getting their uh, six modules done a fortnight, they do need to take on the leftovers for homework before their test. Some students find that they're doing module work during their revision and then that makes revision homework, but it is, it's very manageable to do three modules per week. And we have many students doing more than that, they take on bonus modules even without doing homework. So if they're working well during class time, the need for homework actually uh, goes down. So the expectations for working within our program are quite simple. They're very much like any other maths program. So we require students to have their exercise book, 
we've decided that a grid book is the best. It helps students visualise elements in two dimensions instead of just the one dimensional lines. We've, we've got our X and Y axes. If you're looking at a Cartesian plane, you can draw your graphs a lot easier. So a grid book is the correct book for this topic. It definitely helps students out. They need their pens, ruler, a calculator and a protractor. So we need all of these items with your student in every class in order to be able to deliver the program. Homework, as I touched on before, if your child is not getting through the six modules a fortnight, then it is expected, in class that is, it is expected that they take on some homework. If you're ever looking at their workbook, we expect them to, for each module, write the title, the date, the learning intention of the uh, module, and then any new words, there's often a glossary at the start of each module for any new words. And then they need to be answering the questions. They don't need to write out the whole question for each module question. They just need to answer it, but they do need to correct it as they go. So as they answer a question, a tile will flip over and show them the answer straight away, which will force them to correct it. If they're not getting things correct, we don't want them to move on. We want them to figure it out or fix the mistake before they move on, because there's no point reaffirming the incorrect thinking by going through a module without making sure it's correct. Every student starts at the start of year seven with a blank learning map. This is level one to 10 advanced across all of the 12 substrands in the curriculum. Now students will often come in higher in the statistics and probability strand. Basically that's because there are there is less content in that mathematical strand and sometimes we see equal time being given to it but it is actually quite a lot less content. So the diagnostics, our first diagnostic that all students new to the program sit covers the Victorian curriculum levels one to three and it fills up from the bottom of the blank learning map. This picture here is if a student got every single question correct on that it would turn into a diagonal yellow shaded area. The next diagnostic tests levels four and five and then the third diagnostic tests up to the end of level seven. So what this tells us is if there's any gaps in understandings, we would expect to see blue areas within that shaded area of unmastered content. So this is a typical year seven class. This is actually at the end of year seven. This is 12 months in the program. As you can see, there are a big range of diagnosed levels coming into any class. This is no different to any class. So in this particular class, there was, I think, only one student that came in right on level six, the way that they would have left school. And that student probably would have been achieving higher than a level six on their reports from primary school. It shows really good memory for everything that they've done in the past and maybe the ability to extrapolate further concepts as well. So the number that they get on their reports, especially this report, and the closer to year seven they are, the numbers will be quite different to what you've experienced in primary school. So this is a new baseline of what they have remembered over that time. This is the reason um, why I, as a numeracy specialist, really love this program. This is data from two students, often sitting side by side in the same class, not knowing what level each one is up to, working on the same amount of modules every fortnight and working hard. We've got our student that came in at an average level of 4.7. So they would have been getting 4.5s on their report, which was a shock to them as they were coming out of primary school with, with level sixes. But there was a lot of little fuzzy areas that they needed to work on. They worked hard, they kept pushing themselves and were able to leave year seven right at standard. So there's still some gaps there in year seven, some light blue gaps around here. But there is also learning above that. So 
in concepts that they were really confident in, they just kept going. And that was really promising because it's much more important that a student, you know, if they're on a roll with something, that they keep following that through and they're not stopped because it, it travels over to the next level of maths. So we really want students to be excited about what they're doing. Once they get it, then they can follow that through. Because this student had has grown two levels in one year, they would have made up this time very shortly into year eight and finished the year eight curriculum well before the end of year eight. This student here came to us with quite a low level, very unsure of their knowledge, was probably finding um, primary school moved a little bit fast for them. But because we're able to slow it down a bit and really focus on the next levels for them, they were also able to advance two levels or two years of maths within that one year. Now, they're two very different students with two very different pathways, but these students exist um, regardless of the, of, the, of the program that we're using. And we can actually really hone in on each of their needs without damaging their well-being. So that they don't feel different, they don't seem different. Their level is a personal thing to them and they're working at that. We celebrate growth. The growth here is um, nearly identical. So these two students would be celebrated just as much as each other within the mathematics classroom. This round of reports, uh, we're including a Maths Pathway report, so direct from the portal, in addition to the Compass reporting. So we've got our learning map. So you'll get a copy of this in a supplementary PDF sent alongside your Compass reports. And this will have levels on it. So for this particular student, because in Compass, so we've got our compass reporting here. So our 4.61 in number and algebra for this student actually is so 4.5 is what we'll have to enter into compass and that's what 4.61 looks like for from our maths pathway report to compass. There is learning in grade 6. There is understanding in level 8. It's just because it is not fully consolidated that this new base level is a bit lower than what they would have left primary school with. You can access your parent portal at any time. Um, you just need to use the same, the same uh, credentials that your child uses. So um, it's the URL will have their class name in it and you will click on the child's name and put in their password. So once you get into Maths Pathway, you can click on the Parents and Carers link and it will take you through to the Parent Dashboard. One of the important things to do when you're in there is to pop your name and email into uh, the Details section. It won't get used to send you any spam or anything, but it will keep you informed of your child's test results and things like that. So I'm just going to take you on a quick walk through what the ad additional report for this cycle will look like for you. Um, this is the first time that we are sending these home in addition to our Compass reports. We feel that the information that you can get from these reports from our Maths Pathway portal gives you a lot more information about your child and how they're travelling than what we can put into it. Compass. So your cover page in this report should be the login details on how to access the parent portal and I'll show you that uh, later on what that looks like. If we scroll down to our first page we've got a summary of the tests that your student has done this semester in Maths Pathway. So every student in the same class will have done the same amount of tests. It's just the content on those tests that are a little bit different. This student has managed to sit six tests, which we would expect for this time of year, six to eight tests at this time of year. There is a roughly four tests per term, but because we have gone through some 
pretty strange times at the moment. Um, this might be less than that. We've got our three indicators here. We've got growth, effort, and accuracy. So we use these to um, inform us about how your child is going more than the level that they're displaying because level is just a measure of how much they've memorized or remembered from primary school um, and then we're building on that here in high school. So we want them to grow from whichever point that they come to us at. We also report on our averages in each of the areas. Our growth average, so the average allows us or allows students to have bad weeks as we all do and then to put in plans to make that better for the following cycle. So when they do their reflections each cycle they'll go well I wasn't happy with my growth this cycle or my effort and I plan to do x y and z to improve that. So we, that really allows students to um, strive to do better each time and, and not be defined by their bad weeks or the mistakes. So this particular student um, has done six tests and has an average of 122% growth for those six tests. That means that if this average was continued for a whole 12 months or 16 cycles, that they will have grown 1.2 levels of maths in that time. And that's pretty good. We expect our students to be growing at least at 100% as one year level in one year but our students many of them are traveling at a lot higher than this so 122 percent is is at fair growth we've got our effort score next this is the student doing the amount of modules that are set by the teacher now we've we do have six modules per fortnight generally as a rule but during our lockdown we did reduce those modules for the students because we were mindful of having them in front of the, a device or doing extra work outside of school time. Um, we felt that it was really important for them to get up and to move outside of school hours and, and not be doing extra work. So we did reduce those modules. So in this case, this student has not managed to do the minimum amount of modules. So their effort is under 100%. We expect all of our students to be going for effort of 100%. As you can see here, one week the student did seven instead of six modules, and that has given them an effort score of over 100%. So once again, if we have a bad week where we didn't get all of the modules done, we can actually make it up the next week. So it is quite easy for a student to make up for a, a, a lazy or a slack week the next fortnight and take on some more modules. So anything under 100% is not really what we want our students to be displaying. Now accuracy, as you can see here, this student, every module that they've gotten onto their test, they've been confident with, they've put it on their test and they've actually got every single question right. So even though they haven't done as much work as they should, they have managed to master everything that they have put on their test. So that is really good. We can't read accuracy on its own because if the effort is low and the accuracy is high, it just means that there's been less on those tests. So we really want effort to be 100% and accuracy to be as close to 100 as possible. 100% on every test is a very remarkable thing to get. So this student has really known the, the content that they've been working on. I would hazard that this has been just fuzzy gaps from prior knowledge. Scrolling down further, you've got just an explanation of what that 122% means. So according to these tests, the child is learning 1.22 years of maths each year. So obviously that will fluctuate depending on if their next score is higher or lower than that. And we've got some graphs here that show that accuracy has remained steady but we had, we had a dip in May and that aligns perfectly with our homeschooling there. So it is, it's really interesting over time the amount of information that you can gain from this. You can see when a child was unwell or if other things were going on, um, we can see that, that we can't always perform at the top of our game all the time. So it takes that well-being into account. 
The next levels here can further explain the dots on your report, on your child's report from Compass. So we have really specific data. So we've got really specific levels. So this student is a year seven student. So they're, they're coming, they've come into us at a very standard level. Um, we see kids coming in at about level four from primary school just because of the gaps, not because they've stopped learning at grade four. So for this student, the dot for number and algebra would be at 4.5. However, we are marking a lot more harshly here in maths. We are doing this for mastery. So this baseline, this new baseline, um, should not be compared to what your, your child has uh, received in primary school. This will be the lowest they will be at high school and they will add to these levels at a faster rate than they would have. So we're expecting them to jump up 0.5 to 1.0 each reporting cycle. Um, if they don't jump up that far in one, they'll definitely either miss, jump up further the next one. So it's really important to keep the communication positive around maths and about effort and um, putting in that effort and working on the things that they're ready for. So we'll have a, a 4.5 here a level four here, we, we round down for our um, numbers. I know that sounds a bit harsh because they're close to 4.5, but we do round down so we don't give credit for things that aren't mastered, but it just means that come their next report, they'll probably jump up an extra 0.5 than before. So we are still reporting on what they've mastered, but we just can't report as uh, finitely as Maths Pathway can. And this one here would be a five. Scrolling down onto our curriculum grid. So that's what those marks look like. So we've got a 4.5, which is classically halfway through grade five, on the way to the end of grade five, which would be level five. So this student has remembered things from grade six, but just not confidently enough. So they obviously didn't consolidate all of that, all of the topics that they did in grade six before they came to high school. We've got different little gaps down here that show that the student, while they are competent in those levels, so they would have been awarded those levels in primary school, not every single topic within units of measurement at, at level three and four was consolidated. So remembering once again that it's not because your child didn't learn these things or didn't show competency in primary school it's just that they can't quite remember it in high school and we want to make sure that they can remember things before we move on this student here has understandings at level 8 and level 10 there's some graph interpretation at that is level 10 but is actually quite accessible to our younger students so through our diagnostics, there's been the ability to show that understanding, that one there is um, dealing with uh, reading scatter plots, which we do every day when we access the news and through other subjects in the curriculum. Our diagonal lines here are areas that have been mastered in the diagnostics, and our solid gold is anything the student has put on their test and mastered since. As you can see here, this student has taken on the remaining level five and level six work and mastered that in the last six months and same with these patterns and algebra content here so this first year for year seven is about consolidating all of these gaps and as a teacher i'd be directing the student to be working on these gaps next so filling in these lower gaps and then building on top of that if you have any extra questions about the report, please don't hesitate to contact your student's classroom teacher and they can have a discussion with you. If you do not have the, the login details to access your student's account, you can either talk to your child. It's, it's the same as their login details. It's just that you, you click on an, an extra link within their student portal or you can also email the teacher. Thank you for your time and I look forward to seeing you face to face in the future.